It's a good morning. Actually, a good Monday morning. A Christmas Eve morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. And I am going to be trying my Chiapas coffee that I stirred with chopsticks using the Vortex method. The only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. I do everything at the molecular level. We'll get started, but first, coffee. Nice. Nice. I like my coffee hot, man. I like it where you gotta blow on it a little bit, you gotta let it cool off. This warm coffee business, forget it. Interesting. Very interesting. I have a couple coffee companies that might be interested in sponsoring the Daybreak Show. This is how it goes. If you want to sponsor the Daybreak Show, now I, I prefer a coffee company. Obviously a micro brew beer is not the appropriate company to sponsor a morning show unless it's about sobering up after drinking too much the night before, which I don't do because I have an army of people who are interested in health of their body, their soul, and their mind. You're interested in self-improvement. I'm not telling jokes here. I'm not juggling. I'm not doing sleight of hand tricks. You can be entertained at other channels. I want you to be informed, educated, inspired here. Every morning. On the Daybreak Show. It's important. I would love to be able to do this from a coffee shop every day, if at all possible. That's ideal circumstances, which means I roll out of the sack just the way that I am and get myself to the coffee shop right away. And that's where I have my first cup. The sip that I just took, that was my first sip of coffee of the day. And there's nothing like it, nothing like the first sip. I always chug a glass of water, a pint glass, before I do anything. That goes down before anything. Like within a minute or two of my feet hitting the floor. And then I come downstairs, feed the animals, deal with any situations <laughs> while the coffee is in the French press steeping. And I usually keep my coffee in the French press for nine minutes. Not eight, not ten, nine. For me, I have found that extracts the right amount of flavor for me. I have a, a special method that I use. But if I'm doing it from a coffee shop, that coffee shop is going to have to uh, be a little quieter in the morning. If I go in and there's hipster music playing at six o'clock in the morning, it's not going to work because the morning vibe gets broken. So if there's just the noise of people stopping in and getting coffee. The sounds of a shop, of a retail store, are usually quieter in the morning. What I don't want to do is have like a rock concert early in the morning. That's not something I'm interested in. There is a difference between a morning vibe like this while it's still dark out than an afternoon or evening vibe. But for coffee companies that might be interested, and I've gotten some emails recently, there, let me just tell you the state of the union here. There's a brand new coffee roastery near the salon where I work three days a week. They roast coffee there, they private label coffee there, and it is a cafe where you can go and have your coffee and drink your coffee. So it's they're not just making coffee for restaurants and other stores to sell. They're making it, and it's a retail location where people can go in and nice place to sit, read, study. I'm sure there's Wi-Fi and that type of thing. I prefer a local smaller business as opposed to a national chain. 
That's the first thing. That's my preference. I don't think I'm going to go with a national chain. I was thinking at one time, well, maybe I'll do my show from Starbucks. I'm not doing it from Starbucks. I'll do it from Panera Bread, which has okay coffee, and I like Panera. It's nice, but not interested. I would rather do a, um, a larger mom and pop. And the reason why I say larger is because the smaller companies, they need to do their own shows because they can't afford it. The cost for sponsorship of a YouTube video standard across the board is this. You take anywhere between the last 10, 10 videos or the last month of videos. I do videos every day. You take the average number of views of the show. Now, for instance, the interviews that I do when I have conversations with people sitting across the table from them, those informative conversations that I have, that would not be part of the equation. I would just do the daybreak show. So I would take a month, 30 days worth of daybreak shows, add them up, find the average, uh, add them up, get the average number of views per 30-day uh, period divide it by a thousand and then you multiply it times what I saw was this the figures are uh, you multiply it times a CPM so the average number divided by a thousand multiplied times the CPM which is cost per thousand mille CPM cost per mille which is cost per thousand and that means their cost the sponsor's cost to reach a thousand people and that could be twenty to thirty dollars depending on how you negotiate and that can be quite expensive for a company they can do money mailers coupon magazines radio television newspaper Facebook ads but they're dealing with someone in their store drinking their coffee in their environment. Not just giving a shout out and a link, but doing it at their store. I prefer that. But the small companies, the startups, can't afford it. So that's why I do it now in the cozy nook. When there is a company that can afford it, you take the average you add up all the videos of the Daybreak Show. The past 10 to 30 videos. I do about 20 a month. Take the average number of views. Some views within a first few days. I used to be happy when I would get 500 hits in the first day. And then my metric was a thousand. I wanted a thousand hits in 24 hours. Now I'm getting anywhere between two and five thousand within the first 24 hours. And I find that the shelf life, the shelf life just keeps going. The, the, the views and the hits and the influence of the videos just keeps going and going and going. Having a video online is like having a salesman that works for you 24 seven just always is working and pulling for you. As far as the half-life, what just like uh, medication has a half-life, you take an aspirin every six hours, every eight hours. Videos are most effective for 72 hours. After 72 hours, the the most growth a video is going to have is during the first three days. After three days, it slows down, but it does keep going. But the first three days are the most important. And you look at the videos and how fast they grow in three days. Some of them have 10,000 hits. Some of them have 20,000 hits. I did one a couple weeks ago that has 150,000 hits. Rhyme or reason? Mm, I know not. Sometimes topics do resonate with people and resonate with an audience and they get found. 
So with the proper tagging, titles, descriptions, doing everything I have to do technically from my end, I create videos that get watched, people that enjoy this content. The average little business can't afford that kind of money. When you do the math, it comes out to like $1,900 or $2,000 a video as of last night. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. For some, that's nothing. That's per video. So, but if a company wants, and, and I always recommend this, I never say, oh, just sponsor a video. I say sponsor the series, sponsor the Daybreak show, because you need to be repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. You can't, you can't just advertise or do something once and expect a return. It's got to be absolutely relentless, like the waves rolling in on a beach. Just, they just never stop. They never stop. So if there is a coffee company that wants to get known and become a household word across the country and the world, my, my uh, countries that I reach, United States is number one, UK, Canada, Germany, Australia, those are my biggest audiences. So if a, comp if a coffee company wants to sponsor the Daybreak Show on a regular basis, five days a week, it's going to cost something. But they can't do it just once or twice or sponsor a week. It needs to be relentless. Literally like the waves on the beach just coming Coming, coming. And when people, when the name of the company just rolls off of people's tongues because they heard it so many times, it's the strategy of preeminence, which means that when you think coffee, you think this company. Right now, when you think coffee, what do you think of? Well, let me ask you this question. When you think brands of coffee, what do you think of? You might think Starbucks, right? The reason why you think that is because, and that's not an accident, Starbucks worked very, very hard at getting you to think that. That's what I do. The relentless, relentless nature of putting information out there so that your company's name just rolls off the tongue. When you think coffee, you think XYZ coffee roasters. And that needs to happen over a long period of time. You can't do it for a week. The world is not going to think your company with a week of sponsoring videos. It has to be six months to a year where every morning the Daybreak Show is sponsored by XYZ, and I'm enjoying a blend from XYZ Coffee Company. And that's all people hear is XYZ Coffee Company. People walking into your establishment and buying your bags of coffee is not an accident. It's not a roll of the dice. It's deliberate, it's purposeful, there's a method to the madness, and it's called the strategy of preeminence. And with that, we'll get going with today's show. But I am looking for a coffee roaster company first. For the evening show, I, I would love to have a pipe and cigar company sponsor a show. And that would be also be with guests and so forth. And there would be pipes and cigars and guy stuff and distilled spirits. But that needs to be done on a regular basis even if it's a once a week show and the same pricing principles apply as far as sponsorships are concerned. Just Google the phrase, how much does a YouTube sponsorship cost or how much should I charge for a video sponsorship across the board? Influencers like myself have more influence than newspaper, radio, magazine, and Facebook ads. Video, it, video, I don't want to say video is the future. Video is now. Make it happen now.
Let's get started. What do you think about the Anchor app for podcasting? Everything is done from the phone. And apparently the Anchor app submits the podcast to iTunes and Stitcher. Am I right about that? It automatically gets submitted and somehow they get monetized. I'm not sure how it is. Uh, I did a podcast with someone recently where I was a guest and they just called me on the phone and I, we had a, a 30 to 40 minute conversation and he put a little intro bumper in the front and on the end he trimmed it put the intro the outro and then the interview was in the middle and uploaded so i don't know how that i don't know how the app works how if it's the most effective way to put out a podcast if you know please put a comment down below that would be awesome the the world you don't like and bitch about. Let me say this again. This is the most important thing I'm going to say this morning. The world that you don't like and bitch about, you created it. You create what you are complaining about now. You created somehow, some way, you had a hand in it. You are more powerful than you think. Well, I got this disease, this freak thing, okay? I was driving through an intersection and then got broadsided. I didn't cause that, did I? Extreme, the, the principle of extreme responsibility is this, is that if you look far and deep, you create everything that you are experiencing now, somehow, some way. Very few random things in the universe. You can either have that view, or you can say everything is, ra everything is random. The house you live in is random. The car you drive is random. The type of relationships you have are random. No, 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 no. You have more control over your life than you think. Everything. And it takes time. It's not going to happen. You're not going to start picking more appropriate people. If I had things to do all over again, I know what I would do differently in the course of my life would have been different for decades. Remember what I said, ruts can be 20 years long. Some people say, I feel stuck. I'm in a rut. You can be in a rut for 20 years. You can be in a rut and then your hair turns gray and you're old and you're 60 years old. That happens to some people. It takes many years to see the light. Many years. And most of what helps people see the light is learning how to make proper decisions. The thing, that thing inside of you that makes decisions, that compass is a little bit off. Something's off. You pick the wrong people. You choose the wrong food. You choose not to get the right amount of sleep. You choose not to work out. And then all these things happen in layers of consequences, one after another, start adding up in your life. And then you define yourself by what happens to you versus you being deliberate about your situation. There's no accidents. The world that you don't like and are currently bitching about, you created it. Next topic, please. A little heavy for the morning, right? If you don't enjoy cooking it, nobody's going to enjoy eating it. If you don't enjoy writing it, no one will enjoy reading it. Whatever you do, it always comes through in the final product. Always. How you do it comes through in the final product. Did you ever notice that a meal that is cooked for you with love? Here, I made this for you. Someone who loves you makes you a meal. It tastes wonderful. Versus 
someone who you don't know who just threw something together and threw a plate in front of you? Does something metaphysically happen to the food when it's made with love? I don't know. But I know this. If somebody loves you and makes you a cup of coffee, that first sip is magnificent, isn't it? Don't you need to surround yourself with people that love you? You create that again. You create that. Why are you surrounding yourself with people that don't like you and despise you and discourage you and disappoint you? Some people are addicted to disappointment and that's all they know. That will speak to somebody today. Christmas Day. Now, today's Christmas Eve. Tomorrow's Christmas Day. I'm going to be in the Pocono Mountains Knapsack on my back. There'll be food in my knapsack, a thermos of hot coffee, and I'm hiking for a couple hours to a waterfalls. I will be at the base of the waterfalls, sitting on rocks, eating, drinking a hot cup of coffee, having a pipe in the middle of the wilderness. Hiking on the holidays was a tradition of mine that started when I was a single man. It stopped when I was a married man. And now that I'm a single man again, I love it. Absolutely love it. The air is crisp and cold. It's fresh. The smell of pine from the pine trees in the forest. It's going to be magnificent. That only works if you enjoy solitude and being by yourself. Now I'll see my kids later in the week. I was just talking with my son, texting him, and we'll see each other. I'll give him a haircut. He said, Dad, can I get a haircut? And I said, absolutely, of course. So I'll be cutting my son's hair and then taking the kids out for dinner and having our holiday that way. I don't have a traditional holiday family. That may happen if I ever get married again. That might not If you are born a slave to slave parents, you don't know what freedom is. As a matter of fact, you'll view freedom as radical, bad, and something to fight against. Can you imagine a bird being born in a bird cage, and all it knows is being in a bird cage? You open the door to the bird cage, that bird looks out. Now the bird cage is in a house. That bird doesn't know anything outside of the birdcage. It might wander out of the birdcage, fly around the house and go, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. But it's still in a house. How free are you? And is the freedom that you are experiencing now, is that an illusion? Are you truly free? Like when the bird that was born in a bird cage, lets, gets out of the bird cage or is let out and it thinks it's free, is what you are doing now truly free? Last year at this time, I, at this very time, I talked about changing your language. Start calling your goals your to-do list. I'm not kidding you. 2018 has been the best year of my life. At my age, the best year of my life. Unbelievable. It exceeded my expectations because I completed my to-do list early. My goals for 2019 are going to be sick. Crazy. It's time for you to get unstuck. Let's just get real. Pain insists upon being attended to. It is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. C.S. Lewis. The difference between naked and naked 
is if you're naked, it means you have no clothes on. If you're naked, it means you have no clothes on and you're up to something. Raw cow or raw goat's milk? Illegal in many states. Marijuana? Legal. And people wonder why I'm a libertarian. Stop being a sheep. Stop it. Stop it. Don't be offended when you hear the word sheeple. Use your brain. 50% of marriages end in divorce. 100% of pizzas end in happiness. Sausage and mushrooms, please. Calvin, Pastor John Calvin, born in 1509, died in 1564, the heart of a shepherd, said the pastor ought to have two voices, one for gathering the sheep, another for warding off and driving away wolves and thieves. Love that phrase. I put her out in a town that was so small you could throw a rock from end to end. A dirt road main street she walked off in bare feet. It's a shame I won't be passing through again. Cause like a princess she was laying there. Moonlight dancing off her hair. Sammy Johns, 1973. When you buy quality, you buy once. I have some L.L. Bean clothing that is over 20 years old. Some classic garments, jackets, fleeces. Full color, no fading, crisp, they wear well. I have a pair of Docksider type shoes, moccasin type shoes that are 15 years old. My favorite pullover fleece, sometimes you see me wear it here, it's from J. Crew from the 1980s. It's a dark green in perfect shape. You get what you pay for. When you buy once, you buy quality. Or I should say, when you buy quality, you buy once. If you buy crap, you keep buying over and over and over and over again. That would be another thing I would love to have sponsor this channel would be, for me, an American-made, bespoke clothing company where all I wear is their clothing. That's all I wear for the broadcast. That would be cool. I would like that. One of the things that men never mention... Okay, now this might be the most important thing you hear this morning. One of the things that men never mention leaders, role models, never mention when vetting a woman determining if a woman is for you for the rest of your life or for a period of time. Here's something that people never mention. Does she watch TV? How much does she watch? And what does she watch? Is she a news junkie? Does she always have the news on? Is she a housewives of whatever or a reality show junkie? There's a huge difference you single guys, if you date a woman who watches TV versus a woman that doesn't watch a lot of TV and not a lot of junk and isn't addicted to any of the news stations, no matter what her political views are, there's a huge difference you can see and feel within minutes, and I say less than two hours. The last thing I want to do it would be ever to date a woman who watches nothing but Fox News even though I'm a conservative, I don't want to hear two heads yelling at each other because that's what the news has become. It's more like Fox opinions. Am I right? Not Fox news. I want to hear, I want to hear news. I want to hear proper. I don't want to see people arguing anymore. I'm done with that. Make it a point. 2019, you will no longer argue with anyone. 2019, you are not arguing with anyone. Men, you will not argue with a woman in 2019. You will not do that. So you are warned. 
the more a person watches TV, if they watch TV, and depending on what they watch, that's going to make a huge difference in your relationship. I prefer a woman who is unplugged from television, period, if I can find that. That's a tough one. That makes my pickings even a little bit slimmer. When a parent dies, it's sad because sometimes people grieve not the parent that they had, but the parent that they never had. One too many times I twisted the gate when I was crazy, I thought you were great. I kept my renditions of you on the wall where holiday romance is nothing at all. It's all I can do to keep waiting for you. It's all I can do. It's all I can do. The Cars, 1979. There's no good writers that don't read. If you want to be a good writer, you must read. And there's no shortcut on that. And with that, I'm going to say have a great day today. Merry Christmas Eve to you. Think about the meaning of the, of the holiday or the holy day. You don't have to dwell on it. Just think about why we celebrate what we celebrate as Christian people. If you're not, that's okay. Do your thing. And I'm going to finish my Mexican Chiapas coffee now. Put your comments down below. <clears throat> Bang the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would be wonderful. I'm going to be doing some pretty massive giveaways in 2019. I have a lot of things that I'm going to be giving away. I have one huge thing that I'm going to be giving away that has to do with cigars. And that's only going to be for somebody who is local to the Philadelphia area or one of my clientele that comes to get their hair cut or beard trimmed. If you are a massive, massive cigar fan, let me know and you'll be entered into a drawing for something big, pretty big. Have a great day. I will see you soon. Thanks.